All right, welcome back. So we were going to talk about um, what sugar we found rush. in the news. Yes, oh, sugar yes rush. absolutely, sugar rush. And in my excitement, I mixed up the name. Please, it was not directed by Kemi Adeti, but leave Kemi alone. <laughs> it was directed by Kyle Kasum. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jade's um, um, sugar rush, like I said, they're grossing over 160 million naira since the release date, December 25th. It was about two so weeks. Now, yeah. So now the National Film and Video Censors Board, Nigeria, um, according to online reports, I read this in the punch, that um, it is believed that they uh, suspended the movie from sh uh, showing in the cinemas because they depicted EFCC in a bad, a light. bad light, like they were inept and they were not able to capture, you know, the criminals and do proper investigations. Meanwhile, um, the Nigerian Film and Censor Video Censors Board came out to say that, look, this is not what happened. It is not political. It's just that the movie didn't go through proper approval before being released. So they got a temporary approval while awaiting the permanent approval to go to the cinemas. They released it. How will you release a movie without getting proper approval? Are we fools? So Excuse you, do, my do French. You, you think it's political? Yes, because I've seen the movie and I saw like the role that the EFCC portrayed. Mm. You know, but, but, but they didn't lie. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but, but I can't really... You know, but I think Nigerians, uh, I have always said this, I'll keep saying it, I'll keep saying it until we, they get it. Mm. You must be open to see your reality. Exactly. Do you understand? Do we have corrupt officials currently in the FCC we today? We do. The answer, the what's the answer? We do. Do we, we have do. good ones? We do we do. have great ones that are doing amazing that are not, they can't be corrupted? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. So when a movie is done, you know, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't say because do it's depicting. Do we not depicting. have freedom of speech? You know, and it was such you a know, good movie. I had such a good laugh. It's, it's just so sad that it's happening to such an amazing but movie. let me tell you something that will happen to this movie. Mm -hmm. In fact, when it comes out eventually. That's let what me even, Let me even say that. By the time even Netflix, for instance, or these other video-on-demand platforms get the movie. It's going it, to it, gross it, in so fact, much. It will triple because now everybody will want to everybody go Everybody wants see to see what why. It is. And mm -hmm. then you will now see why. Yeah. And then you, they, they've now put themselves like more, extra publicity. you know, in the public face. Like, I haven't seen the movie because at the point it came out, December 25th, I was at the village eating yeah. ice. Mm -hmm. you know, so now I'm back to Lagos. I was actually looking forward to, to going to the movies to watch it. Yeah, yes. It was mm -hmm. such a good movie. Like, you know all those movies that you will laugh and hold your stomach? <laughs> That's how interesting it is. So I mean, come on, when you have Bimba Demoye and you Bisola, Bisola and this one. Uh, uh, together. Mm -hmm. It's not possible that it will not be nice. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Mario, what did you find for us? So I don't know if I'm always, I'm the one always carrying bad news or there's never good news in the news, but a woman was arrested for burning a nine-year-old child with iron for bed wetting mm -hmm. and it wasn't even that she tried to treat the wound right um the nine-year-old was trying to feed the dog the dog now beat the nine-year-old on the chest so the wound, wound wasn't healing and then a passerby reported it to child services and that's how they found out and in the whole you know investigation they yeah. also found out that the girl had been abused but the oh, girl dear. had not yet said who abused her and mind you this is just a nine-year-old child and i feel like oh, this is so yeah. sad like when will this ever you know stop is it going to stop was being put you know in place why, to control you this? know why it's very easy for me to relate with this story because i was waiting up until 13. and i i think that you can't really hold children responsible for bedwetting you can help them to get over it but you don't punish them because there is no amount of beating i did not receive mm -hmm. and i still if didn't stop sounds, it until i woke up if one I, day. I think i will keep apologizing to my son every day Mm. My younger son actually bedwetted. He was bedwetting till up until maybe age eight or mm. something. Somebody now advised me mm. that you need to spank him when he bedwets. Oh. You spank. At some point, I had to borrow myself brain because I kept spanking. The spanking wasn't working. I was even reading it, it on the internet that bedwetting is not a child's fault. So you literally. So what I now did? Guess child. what I now did? Mm -hmm. I made sure that he stopped at seven p.m. We stopped anything liquid, mm -hmm. no water, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So that was how he was able to control, you know, his bowels and all of that. Because in, in fact, you can't go a certain distance, even driving. He will tell you, "Mommy, I want to pee. pee. Mommy, I want to pee." Yeah. You know. So my husband and I, when we went to drop them in school, my husband said, "It's so, it's so." Uh, and we drove pee. four hours, you know, no pee, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, please, parents out there, in case you were you are naive like I was, mm -hmm. please don't, don't beat beating like, does not solve bedwetting situation. The beatings I received in my life for bedwetting, my wow. goodness. It, I, it did, I, I just woke up one day and I told myself, Sandra, you have to do something. So I started, I made a mental note to always wake up every two hours, use the restroom, and after a while it became a habit. So by as I was clocking 14, I stopped bedwetting. Wow. Wow. 
I, well, my own story is rather very, very heartbreaking as well. Mm. And in fact, the reason we chose this story was because of what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. You know, because I just, I don't know, for some strange reason, I feel like maybe the pressure. Mm. Because um, Princess Moturayo Bolua Femi, mm. she said, Bolu Femi, she said um, she committed suicide. She's an NYSC core member, member mm. serving it somewhere in the East. She committed suicide. And, you know, she, the, what struck me in this um, report that I saw was that she wrote a, a, a suicide note, of course. And she said, there was a part portion that she said, I did this because I see nothing. I see nothing worth living for in this world. That word see. So for me, I was thinking, okay, where is she saying it? Is she saying it online or where is she saying it? Or is she saying it around her? You know, because before, your your competition and all of the people that you look up to, they are just your neighbors. No, you're, you are competing with the global, the global market village, yes. because of the social media, because of the internet and all of that. So now I'm just wondering what, what must have caused this young lady to not see anything worth living for? You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the social media. It can also be like the peers around her, like people around her, maybe mm -hmm. doing stuff and, you know, having like fancy stuff and she's feeling like she doesn't have them because some people, life to them means having like all the good things. They don't know better. So mm -hmm. it does not necessarily have to be social media, if you ask me. Or it may not be social media. Some and it people, can be, I'm just saying. Yeah, it may not be social media, but there, there is a huge chance that maybe 70% possibility that she was in, so this decision was influenced by social media. Yes. Also, it could be a heartbreak. It could be, could be there, anything. There, yeah, there is so many How things. How can you say I did? I, I, I just wish, you know, I, we can get the full story of that why. That thing is real, because I had like, you know, a classmate, but we went like school together mm. that overdosed because her boyfriend broke up with I'm talking about 200 level. Man, they're like, there's 300, you know, the men you meet, 400, and there are plenty men. And then you just overdose because somebody broke up with you. So there are lots of issues like surrounding a lot of young women. And people need to start looking into it. Because well, sad. today, like we said, um, as we said earlier on, we're discussing sh um, social media and mental health. And we have Dr. Maimuna Yusuf Kadri. She'll join us right after this break. Please mm -hmm. stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>